All right, we are a couple minutes past the hour. I'm starting to see numbers taper off a little bit. So just being cognizant of everyone's time, we'll go ahead and begin. So again, thanks for joining. For those joining for the first time, my name is VJ, Director of Training and Support. And alongside me, we have Scott Bishop, our Senior Product Manager. We'll be your two primary presenters for today. Now, before we dive into today's subject and agenda, a couple quick uh, housekeeping items. Number one, we like to keep these learning labs interactive and engaging. So please, as you all have any questions or comments for us throughout the session, if you're comfortable, just go ahead and you know shout those out and, and let us know. Or if you prefer, you can submit those via chat and we'll be sure to address those too. Otherwise, if you kind of plan on just sitting back and listening and learning, um, if you don't mind just keeping your audio lines on mute for everybody else to have a clear audio for today's training. Couple last things, we are recording this for you all and for anybody else that couldn't make it, you can expect this recording to be sent via email. In addition to the recording, you will also find a survey. We highly suggest you all just take a couple minutes Saturday to fill that survey out for us. Really helps us better understand how these trainings and sessions go and also help us understand um, what topics you want us to, to dive into into future sessions. But as it relates to today's session and the subject matter and the agenda, it's going to be all about embedding and how you can leverage Digidex iframe and HTML component to bring in third-party sites, applications, social media pages, schedulers, forms, tons of different ways to bring in various applications, sources, and URLs. So that way, instead of having to hyperlink your text that redirects your recipient to another page or instead of having to attach important documents into a proposal, you can instead embed those important resources right on your slide, keep your recipient in there, and makes your presentation much more interactive. So between Scott and I, we're going to go through a couple different examples of how you can embed and iframe and, and uh, HTML some important applications and systems in. We're going to first navigate out of the deck here and go into the back end of the DigiDeck presentation system where we now see an example slide. So the first example we're gonna take a look at here is simply just embedding a website, your website, an area of a website, a third party website, you're using a part of your tech stack for showcasing hospitality areas, product catalogs, your blogs, tons of different ways to just take an external page and bring that right into your slide. So in essence, another way to kind of think about this is instead of hyperlinking your text, like click here to view our website, click here to view our schedule, iframe your website is an alternate path that you can take instead where it embeds the web page right on the slide directly. So we're skipping a little bit of a step here. We've already placed the iframe component on the slide. You can find our iframe component in the DigiDeck component store. So for the example we're gonna to leverage today, I'm going to iframe our blog in here. So as our marketing team updates our blog, the, of course, the web page uh, or the slide updates with it too. So just navigating directly to our blog. All I need to do here is simply copy the source URL navigate back to the back end of DigiDeck. Within the iframe component, go ahead and paste that URL directly into the source and save. And it is as it sounds. It brings the blog directly into the component. So again, as the marketing team updates the blog, the slide updates with it. And another thing I want to call out here is when you iframe a website or third-party application, Think of this as serving as like a mini web browser. So it's going to bring in all of the tabs, all of the other areas of that website in, in addition to the specific landing page you put into the URL. So keep that in mind. Your recipients can navigate away from that web page. So it's serving as like a mini web browser. So this is example one of bringing your website. And Scott, did you have something to, you want to add? Just going to highlight that I love the idea of the blog example of, you know, anything that has frequently updating content, stuff that's going to have brand new additions, news feeds, uh, you know, it's a nice dynamic way of not having to keep track of things in two places. So, absolutely. Continuing on here, the next use case I want to discuss, it's going to be a very similar workflow where you just copy the source URL, paste it into the iframe, but it's a little bit different in the sense that we want to, I want to talk about how you can use a form. 
So I know in the past, we've heard from a lot of customers through conversation, through trainings, through dialogue, that you want to find a way to embed a form. So it's like the last slide on your presentation. So your recipient can fill the form out, so on and so forth. So keep in mind, you, you can you can do that. And a way to do that is by leveraging a, a form on your website, a third-party form application. So whether you're using it for lead generation purposes, survey purposes, registration forms, uh, feedback, solicitations, things like things of that nature, this is a way for you to just embed a form from, again, whether that form comes on your website, a third-party application, and have that be functional on the slide directly. And another advantage of doing this is that once the form is filled out on the slide, which I'll showcase here momentarily, of course, all that data collects back into that source of truth, back into that uh, application you're leveraging. So you can go back and, and take a look at the data and results pretty intuitively. So just as an example today, uh, the, the form system we typically leverage is, is type form. So as an example, the, the survey um, that was shared with you by, by Katie via chat and that we'll send over to you all via email. Um, what I what I could do here theoretically is copy this link. And what, I'm, what we're looking at here is the back end of type form. So I've already created the survey. I grab the share link here. Come in back and coming back to the Digidec platform. I now paste that survey directly into the iframe container. And again, it serves as like a mini web browser. So as a recipient of this survey, I don't need to leave here. I don't need to click here on text that redirects me to type form. I don't need to receive the survey as a separate link within an email, right? I can sit on your slide and fill this thing right out without needing to leave. And then of course, all this circles right back into my type form uh, data collection. So I can go back and, and take a look at some of the results. We've talked about embedding a website, a web page. We've talked about weaving in a form. And now the last example I want to showcase here today, uh, before I kick it over Scott, of course, is a Google Sheet. So whether you're using a Google Sheet for expense reports, uh, product listings, pricing listings, charts, graphs, budgets, wherever the case is, there is a way for you to bring your Google Sheet and again, have that be embedded on the slide rather than you needing to attach that to an email or send it out separately. So just as a hypothetical example, I've created a purchase order. So again, instead of attaching this purchase order via email, in addition to sending the data deck, I want to embed this on the slide. Now, before I can just copy this link and put it into the iframe container, there is one step or a couple steps you need to consider. And the first one is you need to make sure when you before you share the link, that the link is accessible to anybody that has access to it. For those on the call that are Google Suite users, the typical default is it just defaults to your company. Uh, you want to flip it so anybody with the link has access, because again, if it just defaults to your company, uh, your company or the viewer can't, of course, see that because it's credentialed. So we flip it so anybody has access to a link. And now what I can do is copy the spreadsheet link directly. Come right back into the Digidec platform. And again, we're just going to iframe that into this container here. So now as a recipient, I can access your spreadsheet directly. But again, as we talked about, the iframe serves as a mini web browser. So as you're seeing, some of the Google Sheet tabs and tools and iconography is showing up here too. So what Scott will show you here in a moment is how you can use embed code to kind of strip out and specify specifically what you want to display. But as a quick trick, what I can show you here is if you want to remove some of those kind of the, the Google uh, software aesthetics, what we can do here is open up the source URL and I can remove everything beyond this backslash here where it says edit. So take out this edit text and, and replace that with preview and save. And so what that does, it kind of gives your audience a true preview view. It strips out some of that Google Sheet tabs and iconography. And again, kind of gives it more of a clean look for your spreadsheet. So in quick summary here, we've talked about three different ways you can leverage the iframe component, whether it's iframing a website, web page, a form, or directly from a Google Sheet. And now here, I'm going to pass over to Scott 
So he can talk about how you can use uh, HTML embed code to specify and get more specific on areas of the third-party application that you wish to embed into the slide. Thank you, VJ. Awesome examples. And I am excited to show a couple of additional ones. Um, so yeah, as VJ just showed us, you can pretty easily take any publicly accessible web page, and that includes those shared documents that you then make publicly accessible, throw them into your DigiDeck. Now you've got a, basically a portal into that other page right within uh, the content that your viewer is looking at. Um, but sometimes you want to be a little bit more tailored in the experience. Um, so I'm going to use Microsoft Excel 360 as my example here. <clears throat> Just know that pretty much the same set of options exist within Google Slides. I'll show you where to find those as well. <clears throat> but um, same principle applies. You know, you've created this living document online. And so you first want to think about who's going to expect, be able to look at this. And given that in this case, your viewer is kind of unknown, they're not going to authenticate into any system. You're going to want to set that so that anybody who has the link can look at it. And that will include Digideck. Um, so after your file is publicly available, you can go back to the file menu in Microsoft Excel and go to this share section. Uh, rather than sharing uh, a link to look at this and edit it, kind of the path that Vijay walked us through, this time I'm going to go down the embed path. So here, uh, Microsoft has a nice interface that allows you to do a little bit more fine tuning around exactly what you want to show. In my example here, I've got a, a table of data that is populating a chart on a different tab. And I can choose to show uh, either the whole thing or just a, a section of that. Maybe I only want to show the table data. I can select tables. I can decide whether to show or hide the grid lines for the person who's viewing it. Um, I can decide what dimensions I would like it to be, although I'm going to show you in a second. There's, there's another best practice there that we can look at. Uh, and at the bottom here, what they do is provide the embed code. So once you click on it, copy that to your uh, clipboard, you can go into our HTML component. So this is different than the iframe component. This one is going to be like basically uh, looking at just straight lines of code. And the nice thing is that more and more third-party apps are realizing that they have very nice micro experiences within their platform that could translate well to other platforms and other experiences. And so you'll find more and more uh, of these third parties offering embedded code experiences. Uh, paste that code in, click save. Now it didn't show up quite the size that I was hoping. So I'm going to go back into that code and show you that you can take these specific pixel widths that it provided and change them to simple percentage values. And that might give you a little better experience where the element now takes up the full size of the component. And you can use your typical component sizing uh, mechanisms to decide how big you want it to appear on your form. But as you can see, I've now got uh, basically an embedded spreadsheet into my, my DigiDeck platform, and it allows the customer to view all sorts of data. And uh, again, you know, not to sound like a broken record, but this is helping to update automatically from that source file. So a really common uh, use case that I could envision is that you might have spreadsheet data that's owned by, let's say, the accounting department. And they are the ones who own that data. They update it quarterly. They make sure that all the numbers and figures are accurate. Um, this makes sure that you can embed that one time in a Digideck and any updates they continue to make from that sheet get passed over basically for free automatically. Um, the other thing that we can do is embed just a chart. Remember on this other page, we showed that I have a chart that I've built uh, from that data. <clears throat> and I'm going to go over and grab the embed code for just the chart data this time. I'm going to do automatically. I think I'm going to just do our little uh, sizing hack where we go back and we say, you know, forget about specifying pixel widths. 
just let me set that using the component. So I'm just going to set this to be 100%. Look at that. We have a Microsoft Excel generated chart that lives in a completely separate document that we can access and view in our Digideck platform. So this is a pretty cool way to pass along information. I mean, obviously charts and graphs is a great way to convey, convey meaningful data to customers and viewers, um, but trying to keep that stuff up to date in two places is going to be problematic down the line. So embedding it is really a great solution so that you keep one source of truth and one, the Digideck gets just a viewport into that source of truth. Uh, and again, it, it, to contrast it uh, with what we were looking at before in the iframe solution, we're really being very selective about what we show here. It's not even a small section of my chart sheet. I'm literally saying using the Microsoft uh, user interface, I only want to show this chart. And that's one of the really nice advantages to using the embed code process over the iframe in some cases. In other cases, maybe you want that to be kind of a two-way workbook, and then the iframe option uh, is probably the more ideal one. So there's not a better way to do it. It just has uh, really, you just consider what use case you have in mind ultimately uh, to determine whether iframing something in or embedding it is a better solution. So that takes care of our charts uh, and graph capabilities from Microsoft. Oh, I said I was going to show how to do that in Google Sheets. So let me just go there quickly and show you that they have virtually the same thing. They call it publish to web. So instead of doing the share with others, we're going to do publish to web. We're going to choose to embed it. And a couple, uh, they do have a concept of publishing the document. So you can pick just a single page from there, maybe that you want to publish. This one is already published. Published just means they've made it live and accessible out in the open web. Um, and so the same thing, I can grab this embed code same way. Go back to my Digitech one real quick. Just show you that I can pretty quickly and easily paste in my Google. Didn't do my sizing hack, but I, I won't waste our time on that. You can see how you can pretty pretty easily do the same thing from either Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel 360. Okay, moving right along. Let's talk about social media. So obviously, you know, <clears throat> in many cases, social media is the place where we go to broadcast all of the cool things that we are doing uh, in our individual organizations that we want to talk about. And why not amplify that message in your Digideck. So social media, realizing that they have this awesome capability of sharing all of the wonderful news that uh, companies have going on, they've done the same thing and made a pretty robust embed solution uh, as well. Twitter, uh, now referred to as X, uh, but still going under the domain Twitter, has this publish.twitter.com uh, address that you can go to, and it really has kind of a nice sort of walkthrough process to, to get you your embed code. In my case, I already have a, a Twitter post in mind because we knew we were doing a webinar. So I'm gonna grab this particular Twitter post. I just grabbed the URL, go back to that publish.twitter.com, paste in the URL, and it starts to show me a little preview of what that's gonna look like. I do have some additional customization options. So if you wanted to go to a dark theme versus a light theme, uh, you can decide what language to show in by default and whether or not you want to show the conversation below the tweet or just the tweet itself. Um, and it's so called tweets. Anyway, uh, once we've got our embed code, I'll go back to my Digideck presentation here. Grab a component, an invisible component here. Go into settings, paste this in. Now you'll notice once again, they've determined a nice size for me in the embed code, auto and 700. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. Rendered just fine. Uh, for many cases, that's gonna be just perfect. But same principle applies. You can go back in and say, you know what, actually, I'd just like you to fill up the full size of that component that I put on my Digideck. Switch these values percentages, and you get the same thing, but now it's just taking up the full size of the component. 
So that is embedding a Twitter post and then be remiss without doing the same for Instagram. So we'll go to the Sports Digital Instagram. I have a particular Instagram post in mind that I'd like to share. Clicking on that little three dot menu, the more menu on the post itself will have this embed option. You can decide whether or not to include the caption, copy that embed code. Then go back to our Digideck. Open up that component, paste it in, uh, save, and there we go. Got our Instagram post embedded into our slide as well. So a couple of cool ones, the Instagram, again, Twitter or X, they have their own specific URL where you can go get a little walkthrough for that process. The Instagram side, you're just going to the actual post itself and clicking on that embed button from the three dot menu. So really, really cool, powerful way to help share the messaging that, again, your marketing team is probably already putting out into the world. Um, and then the last topic that I wanted to cover today is a really cool one. This one uh pretty excited about, but it does require a Google for Business account. Uh, but many of you may be using Google for Business within your organization. So we at Sports Digita are, and they added this really cool option. Uh, not even sure when it kind of snuck in under my radar, but they added this ability to schedule appointments, kind of like uh, other other folks may be familiar with the software program Calendly. And I would I'm, I'm confident Calendly has the same embed code process that Google has. But I'll show you Google because we happen to have a subscription to that. If I click on appointment schedule, they'll bring me to this uh, nice little interface where I can set up the hours each day that I'd like to have available for appointment booking. They have the ability to set up uh, blocks of time in between meetings. I know that's something our sales team really appreciates is having, you know, like 10 minutes in between bookable time so they can collect their notes and move forward on the thing without just doing back to back to back to back demos. So it's a nice, nice offering. Uh, when you're finished completing the schedule, which I've already done, what you'll have in your calendar now is this ability to look at appointments. And appointments have a share link. And within the share link, you'll notice that website embed language that we've been looking at. So you can grab a single book, uh, a booking page, or you can show all of your appointments and determine whose appointments you're going to be looking at. And then lastly, they have you decide whether you just want a single button that will take the user through that booking experience or whether you actually wanna show an inline booking page. Uh, that's what I think looks the best. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that option for our demonstration here. Go back to my Digideck, have a very nicely laid out uh, page here with my contact information. And by going up and entering that embed code into this component, um, well, first, let me just click save out of the box. We'll see how it looks. It's a little bit lower uh, than I would like on the page. So remember that cool hack that we looked at before. You can go find where it's setting the height, change that to just be the size of the component itself. It resorts. Now I've got this nice booking interface right within my Digideck, and this is live. This is real appointment times that you can book with somebody. Once you click on it, they can take, take them through the rest of the Google experience. And like I said, this isn't exclusive to Google. I'm sure Calendly has the same embed code process, whatever scheduling software you have, uh, and in increasingly more and more third-party applications that you might be using every day are gonna have this kind of embedded code uh, offering. So it's really cool to be able to just take all of these powerful third-party tools that people are developing and leverage them right in your Digideck so that suddenly you know a viewer has the ability to look through the entire offering. And if they're interested in moving forward, they could book time with the sales rep right then and there. 
Um, the other one that I don't have a demo for, but I just want to briefly mention again is that, you know, people oftentimes want to embed PDFs. And although you probably could use our embed code component for that, um, we did develop a, a special PDF component. So if you're thinking about embedding a PDF and how you might go about doing that, I'd actually suggest using the component itself. It's going to give you uh, some cool things like the ability to control whether or not the viewer can download the PDF or whether they should see it in view only mode. Um, if you choose to embed it, which again, you certainly can, just realize that when they view that PDF, they're going to get the uh, the basic Adobe PDF web viewing uh, options around the top, like zooming in, zooming out, the ability to download, things like that. So you, you can certainly use the embed code for that, um, but that might be a use case where using the direct component that we developed might, might be a better use case. So I hope that was exciting. I was pretty pumped to show a few of those, especially the calendar one. I thought that was a really, really cool offering. And it's just kind of got the gears turning uh, within our own four walls, talking about all of the really cool product offerings that are out there that offer this embed code experience and how you know leveraging that within Digidex really amplifies the capabilities that we have without adding a single line of code to the platform. Yeah, that was great, Scott. I appreciate you walking us through. I know some of that was pretty technical, but also pretty slick in terms of being able to integrate some of those pieces directly into, into a slide. So with that said, I just wanted to open it up. What questions do we have? What, uh, what things can Scott go and I, can, can we go back and review? Are there certain situations or examples you want us to, to talk through? Let us know how we can, how we can help and address any questions. Otherwise, if there are no other questions, thanks again for the time today. We appreciate your attention. And uh, one last thing, I'm going to send over the survey link. If you don't mind, please uh, submit that survey. Take a few minutes out of your day. It really helps us understand uh, what we're doing well, what we need to work on, but also get a better feel for what topics you want to see us address in the future. But again, thanks for your time. Hope to see you on next month's Learning Lab. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all.